who always has the sharpest jackets in, in District 6. Uh, I'm sure Maybe you and Juicy might have the sharpest ones. Juicy Gum? What's that? Juicy uh, Gum? I'm surprised I haven't seen them all week. Okay, welcome. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the District 6 Voter Education uh, Forum. Uh, we're really lucky to actually have a chance to talk to uh, uh, get to talk to our candidates for judges. Oftentimes, we don't have people who are seeking office or holding office as judges actually coming down to community groups and talking uh, talking about their backgrounds, talking about their ideas. It's different than say if we had District Six supervisor candidates here uh, because. Uh, you know, under law, they can't say, hey, this is exactly how I would rule on this because they have to be impartial judges. Uh, it's a little bit different than that, but we'll still will have some time for a little back and forth and questions and answers. My name is James Trace. I used to live here. Um, I don't anymore, but I'm always happy to when the Nolte Brothers come call and say, will you please help us moderate something to help be a part of this. I, uh, I do work at a uh, nonprofit still here in, in the Central City. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we'll have our uh, candidates for judges talk for about eight minutes just about their backgrounds, their philosophies, and uh, maybe if we're, if we're lucky to pass, de pass decisions that they made either as counsel or as, as, as judges. Um, and then we're going to have a great presentation uh, from the Department of, Department of Elections, and there will be time for a little bit of a question and answer from our, from our candidates. Everybody cool with that? Could we start with a little bit of what their job description would be? What their job description would be? Okay, yeah, that would be, um, uh, that would be great. Would you like to take, yeah. take that question and then we'll, we'll jump in? Go ahead and make it. Okay, all right. We can do back and forth. Sure, yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, uh, in general, the San Francisco Superior Courts, there are 52 courts that are filled presently with some vacancies, and one of the judges now is retiring, and this leaves her seat open. There are civil courts, and there are criminal courts in the San Francisco bench, and there are some special courts, like probate and traffic and small claims and family law. The courts don't assign a judge to just one area. They do for a period of time. They receive annual uh, assignments as to what seat they're going to fill. But if, for example, I come with primarily a civil background, I will be expected to sit as a criminal law judge as well as sit on civil uh, court uh, seats as well because they uh, take turns with assignments. So that's changing. And the same with somebody that has primarily a criminal law background. They will be expected to sit and preside over civil cases in addition to criminal cases. Or it could be the probate, family law, traffic, uh, small claims, etc. And so judges by constitution it are elected positions for six-year terms, and as I said, the seat that we're running for is an open seat. We are not challenging any incumbent in this race. So does that give you a little bit of work? Would you like to get into a little bit of more of the day-to-day? -day? Um, would that be helpful? I, it's a, it's a, it was, my question would be, I think my other question would be beyond that, but I think I want to just pass for what happened out that's relatively acceptable. Oh no, I think the, the general uh, role of the judge in San Francisco, just the practical aspects of it, uh, are, are that, that you can assign different departments. Uh, Types of rulings that judges have to make in different parts. So we're going to jump right in and thank you for that great, great question. Thank you. Uh, so I'm having no other way but the list that was hand, handed me to uh, figure out a, an order. We'll start with uh, Mr. Flores. Sure. And, uh, Ms. Yeah. So, and that's the standard. 
stand in front of the pillar, so we're not blocking anyone. Uh, first of all, good evening, and thank you for your interest in San Francisco. Uh, I think it means a lot to have people come out and uh, not only participate in the community, but also uh, go to educational forums like this to become more educated about who they're uh, potentially going to be uh, voting on. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a native San Franciscan. I grew up in the Excelsior District. I was born to parents from El Salvador. They came in the early 70s, uh, seeking the American dream, so to speak. Uh, learned English, learned a vocational uh, training here in San Francisco at the Mission Language and Vocational School. Uh, and 30 years later, I retired from Pac Bell. So would it be nice if everyone had a you know, career path like that? Uh, these days. So, uh, a little bit about me personally. Um, you know, I wasn't uh, the best student uh, that my parents, who worked so hard to come from El Salvador, probably would have wanted. Uh, a little bit of a rough neck, I guess some people would might say at times, but uh, that is, uh, you know, the way you grow up in the city sometimes. Uh, but uh, going into adulthood, I wanted to uh, make sure that I had the discipline uh, to continue with the studies and uh, try to do the same thing that my parents had done and try to accomplish that uh, goal of maximizing uh, the opportunities that are available to you. Uh, I went to the Marine Corps right after high school, uh, two days after I graduated, and uh, ever since then it's been kind of a 180. I, uh, I came back after my initial training. Uh, I was assigned to the Hayward Hawk Missile Unit, by the way. And uh, never saw combat, fortunately. Um, but uh, went to Sac State and graduated college in just two and a half years. So um, I, I feel like I came back and I did absorb that discipline and I worked really hard, uh, took as many classes as I possibly could to uh, graduate from college. And I, I, I attained my bachelor's degree in two and a half years in criminal justice. Um, Going into law was something that was quite unexpected for me. Uh, had I not uh, had certain things happen in life, we all have our experiences that you know either help or hurt us in one way or another, but whatever they are, they, they kind of put us in the path that we lead. Uh, I was studying criminal justice, and I was very close to going into law enforcement uh, at the time. And uh, I had a pretty high GPA. I was 21 years old. And for the first time ever, someone said, you know, law enforcement is great, and that's a respectable field. And uh, being a Marine, and being young, and being bilingual, and you know, riding a motorcycle, and all these things are things that kind of escalate your pay within the system. Uh, but why don't you think about going to law school? Because you could apply to uh, maybe a federal agency or something like that uh, later on. Uh, and I never thought about that. As much as education was pushed, in my household, uh, my parents, uh, you know, God bless them, I love them, uh, but they didn't have the actual tools to tell me these are the kind of courses that you should study uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I listened to this advice, um, I applied to law school and uh, got a scholarship, I ended up with five different scholarships by the time I ended up graduating from law school. Uh, I served as the president of the Latino Law Students Association. Uh, I worked in, this was in Sacramento, I worked at the local schools in the literacy program at middle school uh, and uh, graduated with distinction with a uh, concentration in intellectual property law. Uh, my first legal internship was at La Raza Centro Regal here in San Francisco. I worked with their youth law program. Uh, I failed to mention that between college and law school, I was a group home counselor in Sacramento while uh, working with youth that were either at risk of going into uh, juvenile detention facilities or coming out of juvenile detention facilities, transitioning uh, either to foster care or back home, uh, hopefully. Uh, so after my uh, volunteer position with La Raza Central Legal, I was recruited by a law firm here in San Francisco. I did general civil litigation there. Uh, you name it, kind of any type of lawsuit that you can imagine are uh, the types of things that I handled uh, here in San Francisco, all litigation based. Uh, which I think is a great training program for uh, what happens in lawsuits and what happens in court. Uh, in 2005, I established my own law firm here in San Francisco, uh, right here on Market and Fifth. 
And my goal there was to, for the first time, be able to represent people who were seeking me out uh, because I might be the only Spanish-speaking lawyer that they knew. Um, I have kept, kept all my contacts in the Excelsior District and in the Mission District, people who were working in nonprofits. And uh, being a lawyer in San Francisco, I realized that there was a great need for people to contact lawyers that they felt comfortable with, uh, lawyers that were working in an environment that didn't require them to have a humongous retainer fee to become a client of that law firm. Um, and that's what I did with my, with my practice. I started off as a general civil litigation practice. Uh, I kept tenants in their homes. I got six-figure uh, uh, settlement awards on behalf of tenants in San Francisco being displaced. I made sure that people were in line and respected with the rent ordinance. I gave seminars to landlords to make sure they understood that the rent ordinance was something that is overriding to whatever lease agreement they might have that might say you're here for a year, but if you're in a multi-tenant building, as many of us here know, that lease agreement by itself is only part of the law that applies to that landlord-tenant relationship. To make sure, especially in that time in 2006, where we recall the economy was higher and a lot of people from working class uh, backgrounds for the first time felt that they could buy property, investment property, and that type of thing. In 2007, um, I wanted to spend more time in court. Uh, I contacted my friend uh, who I had served on the board of the San Francisco La Raza Lawyers Association, uh, which is uh, basically a volunteer uh, organization. It's kind of like the Latino Bar here in San Francisco, where we do mentoring and scholarships. Uh, primarily the people working in the nonprofit world in San Francisco, uh, and talk to her about oh, yeah. Thank you. the volunteer attorney program at the Public Defender's Office. I knew the work that she had done there. Um, I thought that it was really good work, and uh, having finished the trial uh, where I had won a verdict on behalf of my client who was injured, uh, I felt that it was a right opportunity to do that. So I went to go volunteer at the Public Defender's Office for four months. I loved the work. I loved um, the, the ability to represent someone kind of at their rawest moment, the ability to be with someone and, and fight for them in, in a situation where in my role as a defense lawyer, it didn't matter if they were guilty, it didn't matter if they were maybe in that gray area where they might have been guilty of some of the charges and not guilty of some of the other ones, uh, or the extreme pleasure uh, and, uh, and a high level of responsibility when someone's completely innocent which happens sometimes as well. Um, after that experience, I decided that I really wanted to do more of that. And for the last seven years, after my first six years of civil litigation, I have now almost exclusively done criminal defense uh, throughout the Bay Area and in the federal courts as well. Um, so that's kind of who I am. Now, why am I running for judge in San Francisco? Uh, this is my hometown. Uh, I love my hometown. My wife grew up in the Richmond District. As mentioned earlier, I grew up in the Excelsior District. I want nothing but the best of my, for my town. I, I, I love its complexities, I love its diversity, and it would be a big honor for me to take the perspective that I think I've gained uh, representing tenants, representing small businesses, representing people accused of crimes in San Francisco, representing people who cannot come back to court, let's say, day after day after day, because they may lose their houses might be arrested for quality of life crimes who may not be able to come back or to be in custody for more than 30 days because if they miss that next rent payment, they're not going to have a place to live and they're going to become one of our homeless population here in San Francisco. Um, so this is a perspective that I personally have. When I look at the bench, there's uh, so many lawyers, excuse me, so many judges that I, that I respect. I think we have a very high quality bench and I feel that I am capable of saying that because I've practiced in Alameda and in San Mateo and in Contra Costa County. Um, but what I do see is a deficiency of lawyers that have represented individuals. We have a good amount of lawyers that come from the prosecutor's office, a good amount of lawyers that come from big firms. Very few lawyers are the ones that have been there representing the injured worker, representing the, uh, the, the, the tenant or the person being sued in court, the small business owner. Uh, and that's the experience that I bring to the table. Um, I am endorsed by 24 judges, uh, which includes 13 judges in San Francisco that are actively on the bench, some retired judges, and some judges from the surrounding Bay Area counties as well. Um, I'm endorsed by the San Francisco Democratic Party, 
Uh, I'm actually endorsed by the San Francisco Republican Party as well and the San Francisco Green Party, which I think is a little bit of uh, San Francisco history, <laughs> I think, knowing how contentious this, uh, this town is when it comes to politics. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of that because I've just been myself before these groups, and the role of a judge is one to be fair and unbiased, uh, and that's what I'm prepared to do for uh, San Francisco. If I have the, the, the pleasure and honor of being elected, I thank you for your time. I hope you consider my vote. Uh, I have flyers outside that list the other endorsements, including the endorsement of Jane Kim, our supervisor here in District 6, um, and many others. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Please, uh, please welcome Carol Kingsley. Um, good evening. Thank you for inviting me to speak with you, the Alliance for a Better District 6, and the other organizations that are co sponsoring this evening's program. I really want to applaud all of you for your civic engagement for your concern around the well-being of the court, and for all the community activity that you've done here with the Alliance for a Better District 6. I've read about uh, some of how you were founded and why, why you are, and uh, it's very impressive. A little bit about my background. Um, I am a Democrat. I have voted consistently and always as a Democrat since I was old enough to vote. I am a San Franciscan by choice. I was born in Minneapolis. Um, I was among uh, four siblings. My mother passed away when I was five months old. Money was tight in our family. So when I graduated from high school, I immediately went to work and saved the money and while working, continuing to work, uh, and with some help of student loans and scholarships, I graduated from college, went on to get my master's degree, and then later went on to get a joint degree here in San Francisco in law and uh, business administration at Golden Gate University. Before I came to San Francisco, I had fallen in love with San Francisco uh, from a previous trip, and I decided that I wanted to relocate and go to law school here so that I could live here for the rest of my life, and that's what I've been doing for the last 32 years. I love this city, and I choose, it by, I, I choose to live here. My son, who's now 22, uh, was raised in San Francisco, he is now going to graduate from college next month. Uh, he's in Tulane University in New Orleans. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, when, when Zach was 15 months old, uh, his father, uh, my husband, uh, was among the eight people who were killed at the 101 California Street shooting. Some of you may remember that uh, 20 years ago in 1993. This was a horrible, her just a horrible uh, event in our, our lives and, and changed our family uh, forever. But it also was a terrible tragedy for the San Francisco uh, community. Everybody really reverberated after that terrible tragedy. And since then, I've been working passionately on the board of directors with a preeminent law firm that works for sensible gun violence, all the way through my work with the police commission, uh, which I just recently completed. I've been working hard so that there is a reduction in gun violence in our community and this country so that other families don't have to go through what my family went through, and that hopefully the city of San Francisco will never have such a shooting um, devastation.